Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. You are joining me from the most heavenly scented kitchen in the whole world because very early this morning, just about cool enough to touch, I have baked my chocolate banana bread. It's basically a normal banana bread recipe, but with four heaped tablespoons of cacao and little bits of chocolate in it. We've got a few people coming over to the house over the next couple of days, including very excitingly this morning, our accountant. And it's just always nice to be able to offer something homemade. So this is becoming somewhat of a speciality and truly, it is so delicious. The thing about banana bread is you cook it low and slow. So this has actually been in the lowest heat agar for about an hour and a half. So the kitchen has been infusing with this heavenly fragrance. It's still warm. Charles, the accountant's gonna be here in about half an hour. So it's gonna be perfect with our morning coffee. So I'm gonna leave it there just to, just to rest for a few moments. So yes, yeah, so we've got a meeting with our accountant this morning and then Charlie and I are heading over to Straw Top. There have been a few more exciting um, renovation updates in Straw Top too. So I'll take you along to show you those updates. And then I thought we could have a little explore around Adderbury. Um, it's an area that is um, obviously very important to us because it's where our cottages are, but I've never really shown you around the village too much and also some of the amazing places really nearby like, um, well, I'm not gonna spoil it. I'll show you around later. And I also have got a sneaky feeling that the wild garlic is starting to come through in the Hook Norton Woods. So I thought we'd take a little detour on our way home to check that out. But first of all, I need to water my seedlings in the greenhouse. So I've popped on. This is a new obsession, this little jacket. It is the perfect lightweight spring jacket. It's from Beaufort and Blake. I just love the classic. This reminds me of a, of a jacket that my dad used to have in the best way possible. It's such a, you know, timeless classic kind of countryside check pattern. Little poppers, which to be honest, I never do up. Little side pockets, which also have little poppers. It's a perfect fling it over your shoulders, spring jacket, heading out in the car to run a few errands, popping into the garden. And it just seems to work over everything. So I have been getting a lot of wear out of this lately. But anyway, let's head to the greenhouse. It's quite gray and overcast at the moment, but it's meant to be getting sunny later, which would be ideal because as you know, my beds are chopped and dropped. Everything from last year that's overwintered has been chopped up and composting on the beds. And hopefully today's the day my new compost should be arriving. So I'm hoping when we get back from our little road trip later on, I should finally be able to compost the beds, which is just going to be so satisfying. It's very much the first stage in healthy veg beds ready for the growing season, which we are so close to, so close. I can almost touch it. So a little update over here, my broad beans sewn in the toilet roll tubes are doing so well. We have actually got the second set of leaves on some of them. I'm watering every two or three days. The ranunculus in the smaller pods are not as happy as the ones in the bigger pods, but I need to keep them watered. We've actually got, I don't know why it's so low down. Maybe I bought like a dwarf variety, but we've got our first little flower there. My potted on kaolette is doing well. Um, my little microgreens are starting to come up over here. Ooh, this looks like it's going to be a purple flower, purple ranunculus, oh no, purple anemone. These I need to take a couple over to mum's house because we potted them together. And we have got success over here with our sweet peas. No sign of germination in my sweet pea in the toilet roll tubes just yet, actually. They don't really need a water, but that'll just be amazing when they all start to spring up. And then this one over here, I actually don't know what this kind of flower is. It reminds me of a snake's head. I bet that's what it's called. But as I mentioned um, in the last couple of vlogs, we just picked up these bulbs for £2.50 and then potted them up and added the moss. And I'm really, really happy with how they look. How has a weed got into my 
little vase over here. nutritionist course and that is okay so smoothies oh, hang on this is really hard to show you I'm not going to be able to spill it um smoothies obviously blend up all the fruit and nuts which does kind of blitz up the fiber so just by adding a little topping and my topping here sorry I really can't show you much more clearly is hang on there we go. My topping is um, nuts, which are broken up but not completely blended up, and some bee pollen. And what that does is it just, because you have to crunch it and chew it that little bit more, also I guess similar effect would be if you don't completely blitz up your smoothie, that just means, okay this sounds a bit weird, but it means that your mouth has to produce more saliva to digest it, which helps with digestion and helps with the fibre content that you get from your smoothie. And to be honest, I absolutely love having a little bit of crunch in my morning smoothie, so if you also like to make your smoothie jars in the morning, then that's a little tip. Yummy. Okay, so I've got a tiny bit of time until our accountant arrives, and I've had a delivery from my absolute favourites, Beaufort and Blake, and I thought I would share with you, hang on, there we go, that's, that's a bit better, I don't need to crouch down. I thought I would share with you a few of my favourites from their current collection because it's a brand that I just absolutely live in. Most of my outfits contain either a Beaufort and Blake pair of trousers or, let's be honest, the most iconic jumper of all time, my most worn, um, probably most worn thing in my entire wardrobe, or one of their shirts or sleeveless vests or jackets. I absolutely adore them. But before I start showing you the pieces, I do have a discount code. It is Josie15, and that will get you 15% off, and it's valid from now until the 10th of April. So you've got a month to choose your spring basics from Beaufort and Blake, and Josie15 will get you 15% off. So if you are looking to invest in some really lovely pieces you're going to wear throughout spring, summer, quite frankly, autumn and winter as well, I have got some really gorgeous bits to share with you. I absolutely love the texture of their shirts. I never really lent towards shirt wearing prior to discovering these, but there's something so beautifully soft and thick about the fabric, you might remember. I was swooning over their winter version of this shirt in the Jolly Nice pop-up. The detail is just gorgeous, they've got these wooden buttons, it's the perfect thickness for sometimes at this time of year, obviously there's still a little bit of a chill in the air, but we want to start dressing in slightly lighter fabrics and it's absolutely perfect for that. This has kind of become a bit of a uniform for me, which is a bit of a surprise because typically I'm not a jeans wearer, but there is something about the Beaufort and Blake denim. It is so soft, it is so well fitted, it looks so classic, and for someone that has spent 32 years not wearing jeans, it's actually enabling me to ease into that style, which I know will be so funny for so many of you because jeans are obviously a staple for so many people. I'm actually just still finding my way, but finding that when I do want to wear a pair of jeans, I'm always looking to the Beaufort and Blake ones. These are actually a slim fit, they are skinny jeans. So I've paired these with some of my favourite boots. I'll show you the jacket on again, because honestly, if you are placing an order, in fact, all three of these pieces, the shirt, the jeans, and the jacket are just absolute spring wardrobe essentials. For the things that we're going to be doing in this vlog, whether that's work meetings or wild garlic hunting or exploring Cotswold villages, this is just a uniform that you can have on rotation and wear non-stop. They just make wardrobe basics really, really well. And I say basics because at the end of the day they're really classic pieces, but they just look so stylish. The quality of the fabric is absolutely gorgeous. They're totally timeless and yet it still feels very current, if that makes 
any sense whatsoever. But of course you know that I adore the knitwear from Bowfoot and Blake, so let's switch the jeans out for a white pair and I'll show you one of my new favourite knits. So just before I pop on the knitwear, we need to have a moment for these jeans. These are quite honestly my perfect pair of jeans. They're not quite full skinny. I don't know if people call them drain pipe, if that's that's the lingo. Um, but as you can see, they are perfectly fitted at the top. They're very flattering. They, I, I am at risk of looking a bit hippie in a lot of pairs of jeans, but there's something very, very flattering about the cut of these. They're very traditional in that they are made from a thick denim. Um, the perfect height waistband, I've styled it with a belt. You can see the little Bofa and Blake logo here. I personally think that as far as jeans go, they are very flattering on the booty as well. But if you can see, which <laughs> you can't, unless I scroll you down, they are the perfect um, width going down. So they are slim enough that if you want to tuck them into a pair of boots, then you absolutely can, but also they're not so skinny that they look a little bit 1990s if you want to pair them with a pair of mules, which when the temperatures start to rise, bring on that moment. Um, they look lovely with a pair of little slip-on mules, which I love for a day working from home and also those times when you just need to pop out, pop to the shops, pop out with friends to get coffee, pop to the pub, pop to the farm shop, whatever you're doing. And I am just absolutely loving all of these neutral tones. Of course, the thing about this coat jacket is it literally goes with absolutely everything. So when I do need to go out walking the dogs or just leaving my car, getting to wherever I'm going, then you can just pop this on over your shoulders and it just works with everything. You are gonna be seeing me wearing this jacket 10 million times over. Let's complete the look. Oh my gosh, this is already a favorite spring outfit. I absolutely love it. All of the spring neutral colors. We've got all of the tones of brown. We've got this oatmeal, the leather from the bag matching in with the leather from the belts. I love it. It's practical and yet it feels very chic and stylish for a countryside look. Okay, let's try on some new wear. Okay, this is actually just me playing around and experimenting. Um, I've not tried this combination before, but sometimes on those chilly days, especially chilly days when I'm working from home or I've got meetings, I just like to throw on a sleeveless vest. This is not from my new order from Bofford and Blake. This is from their collection probably six months ago, but hopefully part of their always on pieces. They have got the best selection of vest tops and it feels very, kind of academia, just wearing a brown knitted vest top. I really like it. I like having the front tucked in so you get the flatteringness of the elongation of the denim. And then it looks a little bit more relaxed having the back still undone. So I really like this combination just for adding a practical layer of warmth. Now, whenever I see on my Instagram Explore page these like preppy styling outfits, they always have a jumper just nonchalantly flung over their shoulders and actually I do really like the look. I think it just, it, do, it does act essentially as a scarf and a back warmer. <laughs> um, it does add a layer of warmth just having it like this. I like how it looks, it adds a little bit of texture, a little bit of intrigue. Um, and then if you do get really chilly, then of course you can put the jumper on as it was designed to be worn. I like how these are not exactly the same, but quite similar in their colorway. This is the most gorgeous warm fabric, in fact, Yes, this is a wool blend, which would explain why it is so toasty warm. So whether you want to wear it as an actual knit, <laughs> which I'll show you in a second, or just flung over the shoulder if you're doing a slightly more kind of preppy styling look, then this is why I, I miss doing these fashion try-ons. I feel like I've not done them in a while here on my channel. I've just kind of shown you things that I've worn out and about. But now that I'm putting together these outfits, I'm feeling like my spring wardrobe. I can see the building blocks all forming and I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. So here we go, the absolute classic spring knit. I think this is just such a wearable piece of knitwear. The colour is this incredibly versatile oat colour, which honestly I think is the most flattering colour for most people, if not 
absolutely everybody. They've got a really simple diamond design in the middle here and I absolutely love this half sip style at the moment. It feels it feels very sporty and trendy, but very trendy. I always feel very ironically untrendy when I use the word trendy. Um, but there's something just very, I don't know, something very chic about this kind of neckline. You can see that it's got a uh, more of like a ribbed detail here where the zip, you could wear it, you know, just like a sporty collar like so if you're really chilly out on a dog walk you can wear it all the way zipped up or if you want to have it in a lot more of a casual way then of course folding the collar down when you get into the pub you've kicked off your boots kicked off your coat you're by the fire you can open it up and then when you head back out into the elements again zip it up and you're super toasty warm that is what's so glorious about these half zips and i'm seeing a lot more of them um everywhere <laughs> at the moment so maybe this half zip is a trend that's coming in at this spring summer once again all the neutrals pairing together so beautifully i love how padded this jacket is it's just enough to provide you with that layer of warmth but it's not bulky it doesn't feel like you're going to get too overheated in it just perfect for popping out um, flinging it on heading into the garden heading to the pub heading out on walks i love it look at how these colors just work so gorgeously together Still in the knitwear and these trousers are actually what I have been most excited to try on from this video. So as you know I'm taking baby steps into the world of denim but what I do love is a slightly more statement trouser. Not that these are wild or <laughs> completely out there but I just absolutely love them. So first of all the colour, they are this beautiful deep kind of forest green shade. There's no belt loops so it adds a kind of simplicity up at the top here. Perfect pockets, the same kind of flattering fit as the denim that I showed you earlier. And these feel a lot more, I'm not going to use the word trendy again, they feel a lot more stylish because they are a wide leg pattern which is what I see the cool people <laughs> wearing. When it comes to footwear, again, I think mules is a really nice option, but I was imagining wearing this outfit on the days when I've got loads of things that I need to do, dashing between meetings, looking around the shops, or just running my errands. So I have actually popped on my Chunky Todd's trainers. They are a kind of OT pink colour as well, which ties in really nicely with the jumper. And I really like the colour blocking kind of look that this has given the outfit. I can imagine a lot of the Cotswold mums <laughs> wearing this kind of outfit. It feels like a very trendy mum on the school run. Um, I know a lot of the girls and ladies that go to Bamford, they would just absolutely love an outfit like this. Something a little bit different to the classic jeans. Um, but yeah, in this green colour. I can't wait to find different ways of styling them. I think with a plain white shirt as well. Let's give that a try. Now I know this looks very similar, but I promise you this is actually not the same shirt that I was wearing earlier. I just absolutely love this style. This one again is previous season from Bofton Blake, but again it might still be on the website. So everything that I am wearing I'll leave linked down below along with the discount code. Josie15. Um, but yes, I just wanted to try styling with something a little bit lighter and I really, really like how this looks. I think again with the sleeveless knit, this could be a really gorgeous outfit. If you love trousers but you want something that's a little bit different to denim, I would say a little bit more comfortable because they are more wide fitting, then I think these are a really fabulous option. I can't wait to find loads of different ways of styling them throughout the spring months. I think colour wise it's going to be surprisingly easy to style these with lots of different colours in my wardrobe, a lot of the neutrals obviously. Even on those chilly days with a really chunky knit, that contrast between the really nicely fitting waist of the trousers with a chunky knit, I think that could look gorgeous with an even looser fitting sleeveless kind of vest top as well on days like today when it's still a little bit chilly. 
I just love them. I'm loving playing around with all of these pieces. I feel like I've put together so many outfits that I'm gonna love wearing over the coming months. And there we go. So I do now have to dash to my meeting, but I've got a few other pieces that I'm gonna show with you a little bit later. So I'll catch up with you in a couple of hours and we'll head over to Straw Top to see the updates. So yes, as I mentioned, I will leave all of these pieces linked down below. Josie 15 will get you 15% off both and Blake until the 10th of April so make the most of it darlings and I can't wait to show you these pieces out and about in real life. Okay my darlings it's a little bit later. Oop, bit of fluff and our meeting with our accountant is done hallelujah and highlight of the meeting was in fact his suit jacket it was from Givenchy and it had almost like a watercolor sausage dog inside the jacket it was one of the coolest things that I have ever seen I've also had a little outfit switch up and we are now had heading to Adderbury the same white jeans and belt combo as I was wearing earlier you'll be very proud of me I'm actually wearing trainers and then this is another shirt from Beaufort and Blake it is I'm leaning into spring farmer's wife <laughs> is the aesthetic for these looks and then you might recall this fantastic little sleeveless um, gilet which I've had from Beaufort and Blake for a little while now really nice layering piece and then I'll probably pop the jacket on top for an extra layer so I'll give you a little update as to how straw top 2 is looking and then let's go and explore the consoles, yay! Okay, my darlings, we have made it to Straw Top. We're in Straw Top 1, the original at the moment. Charlie's just watering the plants and we've had a few more really lovely um, entries into our guest book. I thought I would read you a couple of them and then we'll go and check out what Paul the Plumber has been doing next door in Straw Top 2. So this one is really lovely. Dear Charlie and Josie, we had the most wonderful relaxing week at your beautiful cottage. We truly felt at home. Your attention to detail, attentiveness and genuine care made this a trip we will never forget. All of your recommendations from restaurants to activities really added so much to our experience. We would recommend a stay at Straw Top to anyone and we can't wait to come back. And they have come all the way from Canada. Then we have got one from our latest guests and the cottage hasn't been um, tidied since they left. The crew are coming in tomorrow. Dear Josie and Charlie, we've had the most fabulous time just relaxing and enjoying your beautiful cottage. All the attention to detail is very welcome. Teddy, our Bichon Free, also felt very much at home. I don't think he wants to leave with regards so and so. I won't re reveal their names. And Teddy, very, very cute. So they're the latest two in our guest book which is really sweet we always absolutely love reading the guest feedback um so yeah there we go i won't show you around now because the cottage is up skittled from teddy and his mum and dad's stay so let's go next door and see what progress has been made hellebores are the only thing in bloom at the moment but it won't be long okay next door <laughs> Let's see what the latest. Just go and put a look at the boot room, then I'll come up. <laughs> okay, darling, do you want to explain what's happened here? So this is the boot room. The boot we room. Call it boot room. The utility room boot room. Uh huh. We've obviously, I think we showed before, we put um, some reclaimed uh, terracotta tiles in. Yep. Um, we've rounded off. Basically, this room had virtually no character apart from the wooden beams. Mm. So we kind of wanted to add it back in. So Paul, the plumber. Um, everything has, has rounded the corners off for me um, and tiled the floor. This will have a slightly shinier finish when it's yeah. been washed. Mm -hmm. And then we've used the same, uh, so Hunt Bespoke, who did the kitchen, have put in like a boot room utility room for us. So we've used the same reclaimed Oroco worktops from Retruvius, Retruvius mm -hmm. in here. So how nice does that look? Obviously, it looks like it's always been obviously there. Obviously, in here, the painter hasn't been yet. So the painter will come in and paint off all the marks, he'll fill these in. Oh yeah. Um, but obviously, yeah, so this, these are for wellies under here. Nice. Um, we're going to have a nice cushion, cushion seat. I think probably up to about here, and then we were thinking of like a basket or something here for like, mm. you know, it's a bit of a dead space. Umbrellas. A, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. Well, because then Dog the other leads. idea is I'll have hanging for a Dyson vacuum here on this yep. wall. And then in here is where the boiler is, which needs tidying up. Great. 
to that hive that away. What a fantastic use of space. This room was totally useless before, wasn't and then it? And this is... Wow! Do you know it's crazy because having all of this wood in here has actually made it look bigger. Yeah, it, do you know what? It's been a tricky run. It's always tricky. This is what teaches us. Obviously, we're always learning on interiors and, and property. Everything in the rental costs, we have to think slightly differently to at home. So you have to think, yes, we want it to look great and be in our style, but it needs to be more practical than at home mm. because you've got to think that lots of different people are going to use these spaces. Mm. So this room, if it was in our house, we'd have probably done a few things a bit differently. We'd probably put a sink in for washing the dogs, things like this. Yeah. But for here, you're right, it's trying to find a real, you know, you you make it a utility space. Mm. So I just think it will be nice because we've got this. I mean, this is a real mess out. You don't even want to show it. But I'm not going to show you it. You can come back from a muddy walk and walk straight in this way. Yeah. And come in and take your boots off. Um, I mean, not a lot of rental guests use a washing machine, but if we've got a lot of Americans that come and stay for a week, you're going to want a washing machine. <laughs> we have other nationalities that stay for we a do. week. We do. Other too. nationalities are available. <laughs> um, but we love the Americans. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's a few things in here that. We need to figure out what light fits it, because now I'm seeing this design in here. I'm thinking that two lights might be weird. Oh no, that's a bit of a faff. So I think we just need the one. Just stick with the one. We'll find a something. Pendant. We could check out some antique shops later. But it is looking good in here, isn't it? It's looking very good. Super. Great update. So just a very short drive from the cottage. Of course, we're coming to our favourite place. I all those on mass, isn't it? What's that? The Viburnums. The Viburnums, yeah, looks good. Take note, the yurt opening times, because it is delicious. So it's been a while since we've actually been to Nicholson's, but now lots of the plants are out for sale um, as we're coming into spring. And this looks rather familiar, doesn't it? It does. So it's actually probably coming up to four years to the day. So as I said, four years next month we've lived in this area. So it'll be probably June time that we came here four years ago, mm -hmm. saw the archway, and that archway that we saw is now in our kitchen garden. Archway or pergola? Pergola, sorry. Mm. Yeah. And we thought it was a bespoke one-off. <laughs> We've since found out that there are many of them, but we absolutely love them. And this is a, a trio, a, yeah. a pergola yeah. trio. Yeah. I mean, it would look fantastic in the right garden, this yeah. tree, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Maybe roses growing up, obviously we were growing roses up ours. Yeah. But we Stunning. just love coming here, don't we? I mean, to be honest, it is, if you are all fairly local, it is a great place to come for plants, because we've got loads of offers on them, I mean, look. 20% off <laughs> fruit trees. But we're, um, it's just a nice place to come after a day of work to switch off. It's very zen here. It's a great place to come after a, a day with your accountant. <laughs> So, as I was saying, they've got lots of um, plants here which are perfect if you're setting up a herbaceous border. Aridgeron, they've got lots of salvias, lots of beautiful anemones. Um, haven't swatched any lupins yet, it might still be just a tiny bit early. And if you want to do my little trick with the pots, then of course lots of little bits and bobs you can pick up here as well. Mm. like your jacket, darling? Beaufort and Blake, mate. That is Beaufort and Blake. Yeah, this is Beaufort and Blake. I've, do you know what, I've got one like this from last season that I wear in the garden all the time now, mm. so this can be my smarter one that I don't get muddy. Yeah. But it is, it is, it would be very good for gardening because it's quite nice. I find when we're, so even this time of year when we've been out in the garden, I normally wear like a, a knit, a gilet, and then one of these, and then you've got layers you can take off. Mm. Whereas if you just wear a coat, you've kind of only got one option. Yeah, I like the cord on the collar, on yeah, the neckline. Yeah, the detail is nice, look. But that's the thing. Oh. I, I that's particularly really nice like the detail. pocket detail, like the, I don't know what you'd call that. Yeah. That detail. Little pleat. Yeah, they're a versatile and overshirt. I think it's mm. an overshirt, would you call it a jacket? Yeah, overshirt. Yeah, Very purple's nice. a bit unusual for me, but it's nice Looks to Looks kind of brown. Yeah. Move. Move. Purple like our garden. Have we Very shown nice. your outfit off that you're wearing today? Kind of. Looking. Don't show my shoes, because I think they're a bit dorky. It's funny, because I'm not used to seeing you in trains. I actually think they're quite cute, but it's very unusual to see you in those. I know, I'm trying to be a bit more cool with how I style things. <laughs> I think it's a nice I outfit. Like these jeans, you can wear mules or boots, but I thought trainers would be what most people would probably style jeans with. Do you know what though, I love this outfit. And once again, this is a good outfit, apart from the shoes and maybe the trousers for gardening. <laughs> but it's the, possibly the worst outfit to wear to a building site, which is what you just did. <laughs> Trust you to, but you've done well. To, 
to keep fairly clean and white. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I really, to be fair, much like you complimented my jacket, this is looks particularly nice. Yeah, I like great. the quilted nature of it. Mm. I like the colours in it. Yeah. And then I've got my little Sherpa and little shirt on. I said it's spring farmer's wife sheep. Yeah, I like that. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You do, yeah, you do look a bit farmery, but you know, in the in the most positive sense. Sure, well, it's all positive, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll come over. We always get a bit carried away with Harry Potts, which yeah. are these things. Um, we're planning this weekend on doing a bit of a freshen up for the herb bed. Every year, you know, most of the herb bed is fine and is perennial and has come back and looks great yeah. or is evergreen. But I always like to freshen up a few patches. We're going to be planting some new mint in some new planters. Mm -hmm. We're going to be planting some... Uh, these are digitalis, which are spectacular. They look very boring now, but they will be spectacular. And we're going to put them in the woodland area with the ferns. And then these were probably our favourite allium of last year. They're the really dainty. Now, I'll challenge anyone on the vlog mm -hmm. to pronounce that. So. I call them Cy... Fetheron or something, but that, that's not how they're pronounced. But the thing is, as many of you garden lovers will know, alliums are a variety of the onion family, and they do these ones look very much like chives. So if you've ever left your chives to flower, which are also quite pretty, they won't be dissimilar to this. But these ones dry out really nicely, and we were just saying the other day how nice they look in our bedroom dried out, weren't we? They do, and yeah, they lasted. They've lasted over a year. The ones in our bedroom. Mm. They're very dainty alliums, but the, the other thing with them is I think they come out quite late in the summer. Yes. So it's also quite nice if you're adding alliums into your garden. Obviously you can't, it's too late to plant bulbs, but if you can buy them like this, as you can see, they're quite pricey buying them like this. But they're already established, so we will get flowers this year. Mm. But yeah, it's late spring to summer, whereas most of the bigger alliums tend to be sort of early to mid-spring, I would say. Mm -hmm. So it gives you alliums for longer. Well, there you go. Right, let's have another little explore, shall we? Yeah. We are back home. <laughs> Genuinely, the plan for today, for this afternoon, was actually to go and explore some new villages, um, new places, but like a boomerang, we have ended up just going to one of our favourite places, which is Nicholson's Garden Centre. But I'm sure lots of you can relate to this, even when we lived in London, we would have all the best intentions in the world. We were we would plan the day thinking, oh, we're going to go and check out somewhere new, going to go and visit a new restaurant. And then we would just end up in Honest Burger. That is just, that's just what has happened today. We've ended up going to an old faithful. Um, so I think we're going to do a nice cozy, we really want an early night tonight. Every night is a fairly early night for us, but I think we're genuinely going to get into bed at like eight o'clock tonight which I cannot wait for so we've got back home into my cozies into my lovely fleece and I think we're going to make a veggie pasta it's just an absolute comfort meal for us so there we go not quite the um explorative afternoon that we had planned but a lovely little trip around the garden center we've picked up some beautiful digitalis for around the pond area um and also some bits for the herbaceous border so very well stocked up ready for a weekend of planting I can't get over how lovely this knit is. For something so simple, it just feels so lovely. I absolutely adore it. Um, I can predict I'll be getting so much wear out of this this spring. And it's so lovely and warm with that wool mix as well. So there we go. It's my cosy outfit for the evening. Now let's go and make some pasta. Good morning, my darlings. It's now Wednesday morning. I think I mentioned yesterday that I just completely had a mind blank when it came to booking my Pilates classes this week, so I haven't got any in the diary. But, um, so that's kind of made me fall off the wagon a little bit. Um, but today I'm going to get back on the wagon and do a Peloton. I'm going to do a 30 minute Cody Rigsby. I'm kind of hoping that he's got a new Beyonce ride. I'm sure he will do. It's such an amazing morning today. There's a real light, low mist in the air, but I can tell it's secretly blue skies up there. In fact, let's open the gate and then I can do my ride with a lovely view. But let me just show you this gorgeous vista over the fields. Oh, it's magical, absolutely magical. I think it's gonna be a gorgeous day. We've actually got a team day today. Molly's coming down for the day or up for the day. 
Um, so maybe we'll head out for a nice walk later. Team walk, because it's just gonna be the most gorgeous day. it's an hour or so later freshly showered freshly bristle air wrapped the hair which is just my quick way of getting a tiny tiny bit of movement and volume and most importantly dry hair so as I mentioned today is a team day we've got Molly coming up and we're spending the day together our team days often we will organize a fun activity we try and do that once a quarter um, but today is the mid quarter team catch up so we're actually not necessarily doing an activity today is more of a getting our heads together planning for the year ahead and also a nice lunch out together so the plan is we're going to go over to the fox at oddington which you know is a huge favorite of ours and the reason why i really wanted to go there today is because this week that i'm filming is national pie week <laughs> and they have got an incredible saute of saute no that's not the word assortment of pies which i think will be absolutely scrumptious um so that's the plan when molly gets here we'll all just have a little catch up so outfit wise for now it's pretty casual i call this my Beaufort and blake gardening throw over because it's just perfect for afternoons in the garden either doing the gardening or just enjoying a cup of tea in the garden it's a really beautiful kind of eucalyptus sage color um what do you call these like are they rugby shirts it's almost a little bit those kinds of vibes i feel very um like sporty sporty school mum today so i've got on the both and blake jeans which truly are the most comfortable and in my opinion most flattering jeans in the world and the same belt once again i think they go together really really nicely so this is the outfit of the day for the team meeting somebody actually asked in the last video what this monstrosity is giant black thing above our bed that is our <laughs> i shouldn't call it a monstrosity but um that's the sky glass so we actually put that in our bedroom when Charlie was poorly. When was it? I think in November. I remember he had like a three week flu and he wanted to watch football and stuff in bed. So we bought it up here alongside this sofa. And the plan is actually to sell this sofa. I apologize for those of you that have heard me talking about this before. The plan is to sell this sofa um, and then we will move that TV downstairs. But as of this moment in time, we've still not managed to sell the sofa, which is not ideal because I really don't like this setup. I much prefer, obviously I like to be able to see the incredible view at the moment. It's just a misty view. Um, but yeah, my dream is to open my eyes first thing in the morning and see the view as opposed to seeing the TV. So don't worry. I know that it looks awful. I mean, how much better the bedroom looks when you just kind of <laughs> block that out. And it's very much temporary, but I say temporary in inverted commas because it's currently been here for three and a half months. So yeah, we need to get it sorted. Our long-term goal in here is actually to get a beautiful wooden four poster kind of four poster bed made um and then charlie's dream is to actually get some kind of magic mechanism where there's a tv that slides under the bed and you press a button and it slides up i know that people have tvs in their baseboards of the bed like the footboard are they called footboard or baseboard like the headboard but the other end and the tvs come out of that but even if this tv came out of a footboard it would still come up to here and i just don't want anything obstructing the view so i think what's going to have to happen is it's going to have to like I, I don't know if these mechanisms even exist it's going to have to lie under the bed and then go zzz, zzz. <laughs> If anyone knows of any incredible co companies either mechanical or carpentry that do that kind of thing let me know um, because we have got rather used to watching TV on a big screen. Anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about this. Very boring, but that is the current situation, which I'm almost embarrassed to show you. Very much the theme 
of this vlog that things are not going quite to plan but um, turns out Fox at Onnington don't do pies at lunchtime. <laughs> so we've actually come to another really lovely place. This is the Wickham Park Farm Shop and they have got a restaurant here which so many local friends have told us about called Farm and Table. We've popped here before for a brunch um, but never for a proper, proper meal like a lunch or a dinner. They also do tapas on Friday nights, which again I've heard is really, really good. But it's just a really lovely kind of barn just off the farm shop where they do a lovely lunch. Even the guys at Quince and Clover have told us it's really good. So it definitely comes very highly recommended. And we are quite literally in the middle of a farmyard, so it doesn't get much more authentic than this. Of course, I've popped on my jacket, which honestly, I know I'm just going to be living in for the rest of my life um, and then the cozy knit underneath and I've even put a thermal underneath the knit because it is blooming freezing today but let's head to farm and table and get some lovely lunch. This is how authentic the setting is. We've got a tractor here that um, needs a really good wash, needs a new tie by the looks of it. There's a load of lovely little cows over here that have clearly been rolling in the hay. They are covered in straw. Little terrors, look at them. They've obviously been having a really good little roly-poly. But anyway, let's head around the corner and get some lunch. So this is the actual farm shop. I think we'll have a little look in here after we've had some lunch. They've got a few little bulbs for sale out the front here. This is where I came, I don't know if you remember, for my pumpkins last year. Um, they've got really lovely homemade ice cream here. And around the corner, this is the barn that we're gonna have our lunch in. Hello there. Are you security? Are you security? May I enter? May I enter? Are you friendly? Yes, I've got something on my tippy schnoo. Are you trying to come in? Where's your mummy? Where's your mummy? Well, this looks amazing. I have got a buttermilk fried chicken burger. Yum. We've got a salad. Molly has got a green veggie curry. Chloe, oh my goodness, wow. What is it called? Corn yeah, Reuben. beef. Reuben. Yeah, a Reuben sandwich with corned beef in it. Oh. Not tinned corned beef. Not tinned corned beef. That looks amazing. And Chaz has got? Mushrooms on toast. Mushrooms on toast. And nice and healthy. Caesar, Caesar salad. salad. Yummy. We're practicing using the camera. Looks delish. Bon appetit. After lunch trip to the farm shop. I just love how everything's presented in here in all the baskets. Looks very wholesome. They've got rhubarb presented on the straw, so many different fruits, all, well, can't all be local because we've got <laughs> so many different kinds of oranges and lemons, different types of garlic, oak smoked garlic, shallots. I'm actually going to get string curry out of because if anything... We were actually only saying the other day, where can you buy a string of onions? They, they actually look really nice for that as well. They yeah, look nice little we bit of decoration. <laughs> In case anyone wondered what the perks of working for Fashion on the Limited are, <laughs> Charlie is buying everyone a string of onions. Did you say yes to getting a string of onions? <laughs> Molly, how do you feel about your gift? She's thrilled. She's thrilled. Oh my gosh, I think Charlie's getting the most joy out of this. <laughs> Always giving. Oh, Charlie. Yeah, onions. That's a good way around the tax man. <laughs> This is an English sparkling rosé from a brand called Whiston. Might have to try that out. This is actually probably the nearest place to come and do a food shop if you're staying at Straw Top Cottage as well. They've got so many lovely bits. They've got all of the pantry essentials that you might need. Lots of different pestos, beans, all of the different herbs and spices. And the great thing about farm shops is they always have a lovely selection of more kind of artisan products. I mean, look at these. Ooh. Natural multicolored pasta. How fun. Lots of teas, lots of coffees. This is also such a good shout for breakfast. They've got all of these different frozen um, croissants, chocolate ch chocolate twists, panna raisin, Danish, maple peak and Danish. Such a good idea to fill your freezer with these. And if you ever have friends popping over for a coffee at breakfast time, just whack one in the oven. Absolutely scrumptious. Even have a refill station, hazelnuts, Brazil nuts, cashews. They really have got everything. Okay, you're um you are balanced behind an absolute mountain of 
products, not products, um, food items that I've bought from my favourite uh, bulk kind of buying website. And actually, do you know what? I think it was actually one of you guys that let me know about this website. It's called Buy Whole Foods Online. And it doesn't appear, it doesn't really necessarily look like the most professional website. So initially I was like, is this legit? Um, but it is. So I thank whoever recommended this website to me because now I buy loads of stuff from them. So I thought I'd quickly show you what I got. For the first time ever, I've added a rose water into my order. It's an organic rose water and you can use this. I'm just gonna pour it into a little misty bottle and use it as a face mist because when you're out in the garden or after, you know, if you've been anywhere, you just want a little bit of refreshing, then that is the most natural and calming thing that you can spray your face with. Then they've got some, I, I do buy the like, cupboard essentials now that i know that they have it without the packaging at the wyatt's um not wyatt's wickham farm shop i will probably get my nuts from there next time but i did bulk buy um cashew nuts macadamia nuts i think we've got like pine nuts pistachio nuts all in this pile but more excitingly I also, for the first time, delved into their snack section, and I love a chocolate-covered nut. Like, when you just have that afternoon requirement for a little sweet something, I feel like these are going to be perfect. So, I got milk chocolate peanuts. And these work out just so much more affordable than when you buy them in Pret or places like that. So if you do have a tendency to pick those up, this could be a much more affordable way of doing it. This bag, by the way, is completely compostable and recyclable. So milk chocolate peanuts, milk chocolate almonds. If I'm in more of a savory mood, wasabi coated peanuts. I wonder if this is real wasabi or if it's actually just horseradish. Do you know what? These <laughs> ingredients are not great. I just kind of presumed that um, they would be pretty good because it's from a whole food website. However, the ingredients are peanuts, modified cornstarch, wheat flour, sugar, dextrin. Yeah, this is oh, not as wholesome as I thought. Never mind. Seaweed peanuts. I don't know what seaweed peanuts are going to taste like, but I can't wait to find out. Now we're getting really niche and a little bit weird. Salt, no, satay flavoured broad beans. I'm just intrigued to try these. A bit more normal. Dark chocolate coated Brazil nuts vegan and organic milk chocolate almonds so i've got milk chocolate and dark chocolate almonds and then <laughs> there's always the, the thing that is the reason that you even went on the website in the first place and for me it was this because i want to make my own hot cross buns at some point in the next week or so when is easter is it the 31st of march i don't know but i can't wait um I actually placed a very large Mrs. Alice order this morning and um, there's some really gorgeous like Easter tableware within that order that I'm so excited to open. But I'm gonna make my own hot cross buns and I'm going to make the hot cross bun energy balls that they sell at Dalesford as well. So, oh, and also roasted and salted edamame beans. Just nice little savory, not necessarily healthy, but not bad for you snacks that I can just snuffle on whenever my heart desires. I'm gonna try one of the milk chocolate almonds. I know what they're going to taste like. Ooh. That is a very good chocolate to almond ratio. Mm. all you need is one or two just to satisfy that craving so I'm gonna put them in this we have a load of these Dalesford jars in um, our cupboard and they're so handy 
I think you can get them on the Dalesford website. I've said a million times that we've got a £10 off code. For full transparency, whenever anyone uses that code, we also get £10 off. And <laughs> we've actually got too many of these codes now, and I don't actually think I'm ever going to be able to use them all. I've shared it with all of my friends and family, saying if you want to go on Dalesford, here is my code. Actually, I was going to say, I will give you guys my codes, but I'm already giving you one. So I don't know how that would work. It's not going to work, is it? No. Ignore me. Completely ignore me. I was going to say, I will literally give you the code that Dales would send me as a thank you for sending people your way, but the code that I was originally sharing with you already gives you the £10 off. So it's not going to help. If you've already used the first order £10 off and you want another £10 off, let me know because I've got so many that I can share with you. I will, I will just leave a few in the description box down below. That was a digression. So I'm going to put the chocolate almonds in here. Yay, that is so perfect. And there's a small handful left, so I might just have to snuffle those now. Perfect. Going to have a pantry full of chocolate covered nuts. <laughs> you know how I said you can just go and have one. Clearly, that's never going to happen because these are so Moorish. Mm. And then I've got a couple of uh, lovely beauty deliveries that arrived that I thought I would quickly unbox with you. This looks rather sweet. It's got a little rose attached to the top. Ah. In celebration of International Women's Day, I want to thank the many women who have inspired me through the years. My grandmother Este was always the greatest friend and mentor. Grandmother? I always thought that Erin Lauder's mother was Este Lauder. Didn't realise it was her granddaughter, but that's very sweet. Fresh rose. Ooh! That still smells so gorgeous. I need to get that in some water. Erin branding, like all the colours, all the fragrances, all of the patterns that they use. I just love them. It is such a beautiful brand. Ooh. Mediterranean Honeysuckle. I think this is the travel size, which is so handy. Even their little mini bottles are just absolute beauties. It's got this gorgeous pattern on it, which you can see through the other side. And then we've got a full size of Mediterranean Honeysuckle Tiare. Is that a... Uh, special edition maybe. I always love to see what colour the lid is. Ooh, this one is a pearly white Mediterranean Honeysuckle Tiare. They're just the most elegant bottles, aren't they? So beautiful. And such light, fresh fragrances. This reminds me of holidays. Oh my gosh! This really smells like Charlie's mum. <laughs> I wonder what fragrance she wears that smells so similar to this. Must be something with honeysuckle, but that really reminds me of Charlie's mum. Maybe she actually wears this. I'll have to check, but that is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Erin. And then I've got this giant, looks like, I don't know what it looks like, giant ice cube from Charlotte Tilbury. Turn to discover. Turn to discover. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Ah, that undid the thingy majiggy. Okay, ah, I see, right, here we go. Turn to discover, there it is. Someone has spent a very long time designing this box. Okie dokie. So this is the new Magic Hydration Revival Cleanser Cream to Foam to Milk with hyaluronic acid plus peptides plus a biometric complex to cleanse, hydrate and glow the skin, reduce the look of pores, make the skin look clearer and smoother and remove all makeup and impurities. Well, that sounds amazing. I do love Charlotte Tilbury skincare. I feel like because they're so good at makeup, people often overlook them for skincare, but their magic serum, their magic face cream, I absolutely love them. Um, and their magic eye cream as well is really lovely. So this is a brand new launch as part of that collection. I will give this a go tonight as part of my... Oh, I got chocolate in my teeth, probably. I'll give this a go tonight as part of my evening skincare routine and I will share the experience with you possibly. 
I say possibly because I'm actually going to meet some friends for dinner at Soho Farmhouse tonight. We're going to Pen Yen, which means I'm going to get teriyaki aubergine, which I'm so excited about because it's so scrumptious and it's a nice change from pub food. So I might be too tired to show you, but I promise I will show you that in another vlog in the not too distant future. It's so heavy that I feel like there are more products in here and I'm not sure how to get to them. Nope, that did nothing. more challenging than I feel like it should have been but <laughs> I've managed to find the magic serum and the magic cream at the other side so these are all part of the routine that includes the new cleanser oh my gosh that's hilarious how much I have completely um, shredded this delivery but <laughs> lots of fun thank you Charlotte Tilbury can't wait to try the new cleanser oh my goodness this honestly the longer I'm wearing it the nicer it's getting. That's just an absolute delight. Such a lovely, light, fresh spring fragrance. And the bottles are just so gorgeous. Mm, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Okay, um, I need to leave in about half an hour's time, so I'm gonna go and refresh my makeup and finish off a few emails for the day. So I'll see you when we are ready to go to Soho Farm. Well, this is the worst lighting in the entire world, but made it to Soho Farmhouse and I'm so looking forward to a delicious pen yen this evening. The teriyaki aubergine is probably one of my favourite dishes of all time. There goes the light. Um, but I probably won't bring you with me, darlings, so I'm just checking out and I will end the vlog here. Thank you for watching. It's been a nice one taking you to a couple of our favourite haunts in the Cotswolds and one or two new ones as well. Um, we had a really good team meeting today and we were looking at all the things that you guys seem to really enjoy in the videos and I know that more Cotswolds content is what you'd like to see so we're going to make a plan of different villages, different, um, different places to explore and bring you along with me and Charlie to all of them. So if you've got any particular recommendations then let me know. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching today's vlog darlings and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Good night.